If you remember well, one of the problems we had with the first law of thermodynamics is that it was reversible in the sense that we were able to do some processes and other processes. If you remember well, one of the problems we had with the first law of thermodynamics is that the first law of thermodynamics was a very powerful law. Oh. One of the problems we had with the first law of thermodynamics is that the first law of thermodynamics was a very powerful law in terms of defining the conservation of energy. However, there was no restriction in the direction of the process. This means that with the first law of thermodynamics, all processes are possible, okay? And we gave the example of Joule experiment where you can easily reverse Joule experiment if you restrict your analysis to the first law of thermodynamics. So now, in order to differentiate between the processes that are possible and the processes that are not, we need another mathematical tool, okay? And typically, what is needed is an inequality, okay? And this is why we'll be introducing here Clausius inequality. So this inequality is expected to tell us that if a certain amount or property or set of variables are below a certain threshold or value this means that the processes for example are possible otherwise they're impossible so basically an inequality will be dividing the space of possibilities into part where it's possible and the part where it's not possible to do this Clausius had a very clever actually move. So what he did is that he imagined a cycle and the cycle will be violating Kelvin Planck's statement of the second law of thermodynamics. And then after this, he tried to analytically analyze the cycle and hopefully ended up with a certain formulation that will be telling us analytically in this case if the process is possible or not, okay? So, for this, Clausius imagined a certain reservoir with the temperature TR. R here is for reversible. This reservoir is feeding with a certain heat delta QR, a reversible heat engine. So remember, this is a reversible heat engine. And this reversible heat engine is providing us with a certain work, delta W, reversible. Well, if we stop here, we are already violating Kelvin Planck's statement of uh, second law of thermodynamics because we have work out while we are, this engine is fed from only one reservoir. We are not rejecting heat here. But, fair enough. We will be rejecting heat that will be called in delta Q and the temperature here will be T. But this heat will be going to a system. It can be any system. And now this system is providing us with a certain work, delta W system. Okay? So now if we consider all this as system, okay? So well, we have constructed a cycle where we have only heat coming from the reservoir TR. We are generating work, which is W reversible and W of the system but we are not rejecting heat so the system violates kelvin planck statement of the second law okay so we know from the start that this 
system of this cycle is violating Kelvin Planck's statement of the second law of thermodynamics. The objective now is to formulate this analytically, okay? So, what do we know if we analyze the system? We know that, well, we took all the system here, so it becomes a closed system, and we know that for a closed system, we have delta E of the system is equal to Qn minus work out, okay? And what do we know? We know that the work out, which is the work total, for the system is equal to what is equal to the work reversible plus our work of the system plus the work given by our system so now what we will do we will consider only a small portion of our cycle by doing this since we took a very small portion of the of the cycle we can write that delta E of the system is equal to delta Q minus delta W, okay? But what is delta Q here? This is delta QR, so our QN minus the total work delta W total, right? However, and this is why now it's important to remember that this guy here, this heat engine, is reversible. If you remember well, that for reversible heat engine, only for reversible ones, we managed to claim that and to show that the ratios of the heat are equal to the ratios of the temperature, or delta QR, over TR is equal to delta Q over T, okay? So delta QR over TR is equal delta Q over T, which is interesting here because this will allow us to replace our delta QR. So this tells us that delta QR is equal to what? Is equal to TR delta Q over T that we can replace here. So, this gives us, in this case, that TR, the temperature of our reservoir, cross delta Q over T minus the total work is equal to the variation of the energy in the system. Remember, this is just a small portion of the system, okay? So now, since we took this cycle and we took only a small portion of the cycle, what we can do, we can compute a cyclic integral, right? So basically, we sum up all the small portions around the cycle. And by doing this, we know that this guy here will end up zero because it's delta U2 minus delta U1, sorry, U2 minus U1, U3 minus U2, and so on. And then you come back to your initial point. So the cyclic integral of delta E of the system is equal to the cyclic integral of TR delta Q over T minus the cyclic integral of delta WT. And this is equal to zero. So, but this actually will stay this way. However, this is the summation of all the work so this ultimately will give us the work total. So meaning that we can write now that TR delta Q over T is equal to the integral of delta WT and this guy is equal to the total work, okay? So we have reached the point where we wrote that the cyclic integral TR delta Q over T is equal to the total work. TR is positive, right? And it's a constant. So 
it's positive because it's an absolute temperature integral of delta q over t is equal the total work now we have to recall that we actually Clausius designed this cycle on purpose to violate Kelvin Planck's statement of the second law of thermodynamics okay so this means that if this term is positive delta q over t then is positive this means that we managed to design a cycle that violates the Kelvin Planck statement of uh, the second law of thermodynamics is given us and is still given us positive work so now we reverse it in order for this cycle not to violate Kelvin Planck's statement of the second law of thermodynamics this term has to be necessarily smaller or equal than zero if it's positive this means that we did it we violated Kelvin Planck statement of the second law of thermodynamics and we managed to have a cycle having heat only from one reservoir and producing work out so this condition is basically representing how we can violate Kelvin Planck statement of the second law of thermodynamics since TR is positive so this will lead us to this formulation which is the integral of delta Q over T has necessarily to be negative of equal or equal to zero in order for the cycle not to violate Kelvin Planck statement of the second law of thermodynamics and we call this Clausius inequality and this inequality is tell us is telling us also that for a reversible cycle basically when you can go one way or the other way around you will be simply flipping this inequality in one case it will be lower or equal to zero but since it's reversible you can also modify it to have it higher or equal to zero for example. so the only condition in this case will be that this inequality has to be equal to zero for the cycle to be reversible so this means that for a reversible cycle we have the integral of delta q over t has to be equal to zero if you claim that you have designed a reversible cycle this condition has to be fulfilled okay when you look at, uh, at this inequality in this way it might look a bit abstract but we will look at different examples and you will see that how we can apply closest inequality and that it's really a very powerful tool